So I've spent my career working at the intersection of data and computation in order to improve the care and health that individuals and populations receive. And yet, I'll guess that many of the people in the audience today have never heard of the field that I work in. So today, what I want to do is introduce you to the new healthcare information age, an unprecedented time in human history where we have more data than ever that we can use to improve health and healthcare. So to begin, I want to put you all in a position that many of us have been in or will be in. You're at the bedside of a loved one in the hospital. Perhaps they were admitted for a relatively simple infection. But now it's become a life or death battle because your loved one has developed sepsis, an exaggerated immune response where the body attacks its own organs and tissues, and one that has a mortality rate of almost 30%. Now, when you have to make decisions for your loved one, do you want to make those decisions based on what you can observe here and now, or would you rather have an opportunity to glimpse the future and understand how the decisions you make now will impact their survival and long-term outcomes? This may sound like science fiction, but it's not. Because by using the power of modern computation, we can harness the data that we have in the healthcare environment, and we can anticipate who will develop sepsis before they get sick, and how they will respond to therapy. In fact, for 80% of those patients today, we can know eight to 10 hours in advance if they will develop this life-threatening condition. And we can make changes in our care so that they never end up in the ICU and you never have to make those life or death decisions. This is not science fiction. So that brings you back to why I'm on this stage and the field that I work in that I'm gonna guess many of you have not heard of. So if you were to ask the most authoritative of sources what I do for a living, my mother, <laughs> she would pull a tattered business card out of her wallet, and she would tell you that what I do has something to do with collecting information and putting it into databases so that we could share it with other researchers. Now this is not entirely wrong, but it's also not the whole story. Sorry, Mom. The reality is that what I do is working with multidisciplinary teams of clinicians, scientists, and technologists. I harness all of the data that we have in the healthcare environment today so that we can make better decisions. In fact, I'm a time traveler. <laughs> what I do is I look at the future so that the choices we make right now are better and result in better health and health care. Much like we use GPS in our cars to chart a journey from our destination to our endpoint, I use the same technology to anticipate the journey that our patients will go on to achieve better health. And I can ask questions like, who is gonna get sick? How will they respond to therapy? And perhaps most importantly, how do we prevent them from getting sick in the first place? Now to understand why this is so important, we have to also recognize how decisions are made today in the healthcare environment. And this is a scene that plays out in hospitals every day. Clinicians and caregivers are literally drowning in a sea of data from electronic health records, laboratory testing, imaging, sensors, to name a few of many sources. And the reality is, we rely on humans to find important patterns in that data and make sense of it. Now, the human brain is a powerful tool for pattern recognition. In fact, it's one of our cognitive super strengths. However, we are also limited, because at any point in time, we can recall and reason on around seven pieces of information. That's why phone numbers are the length that they are. Unfortunately, most of the decisions we need to make in healthcare today involve thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of points of information. So how do we overcome that human limitation, but also make sure that we allow those care providers to use those cognitive strengths to recognize important patterns in that data? 
This is where artificial intelligence or AI comes in. Now, many people are skeptical of AI today, but the reality is that AI is not meant to replace humans. It's meant to make humans better. Because by using the power of modern computation, we can organize, sort through, and deliver the right information in the right time, place, and format in order to allow humans to recognize those patterns and make better decisions. Now, AI sounds like something new, but it's not. In fact, AI applied to medicine is the origin of the field that I work in, informatics. However, today, because of the massive increases in computational capability we have, the data we have at our fingertips, and our increased understanding of how to use these technologies, we are at the precipice of changing health and healthcare. So let's go back to the clinic. This time, you're a parent, and you're there with your child who has recently been diagnosed with neurofibromatosis type 1 or NF1. This is the most common of rare genetic diseases in early childhood. And while it is relatively easily diagnosed through a simple genetic test and physical exam, then things get pretty complicated. Because kids with NF1 can develop all sorts of outcomes. Some may be perfectly healthy, others will develop scoliosis, ADHD, painful nerve sheath tumors, or even brain tumors that may rob them of their sight. And the problem is, even though we can diagnose this disease, we don't know what's gonna come next. So once again, I ask you, would you rather make a decision for your child with NF1 based on what we can observe here and now and the uncertainty of what comes next? Or would you rather glimpse the future for your child and anticipate which one of those outcomes they will have and make better choices now? So again, in my own laboratory, we have been able to do just that by applying AI to data from children with NF1. In fact, today, with high degrees of certainty, we can anticipate which of these children will in fact develop scoliosis, ADHD, or optic pathway gliomas, a type of brain tumor that robs them of their sight. Imagine again if you're that parent. Do you want that ability to see the future, to make better decisions for your child today? I think the answer is yes. And we don't have to just stop at individual patients. We can also think about populations. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we were able to use the power of AI to create weather maps of disease, not just seeing where we had infections today, but where we were going to have more infections in the future, how we needed to deploy resources to take care of those patients, and perhaps most importantly, when vaccines were available, how to deploy those vaccines to take care of the most vulnerable populations. And again, this is not science fiction. We use these tools to manage our response to COVID-19 here in the St. Louis region, and it saved countless lives. And we also don't have to just stop with COVID-19. We use the exact same tools today to create weather maps of disease, including critical public health emergencies like STDs and gun violence, to name a few of many. This is the power of AI to make better decisions for populations. You know, there's a saying in healthcare, which is when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. The reason for this saying is that all things being equal, we should accept the simplest explanation for something that we observe. How does the average patient present with the disease? How does the average patient respond to therapy? However, with the power of AI, we can glimpse the future for individual patients. We no longer have to be satisfied with making decisions based upon how the average patient behaves, but rather we can anticipate what's going to happen for the individual and make better choices today. So I wanna take you back to the clinic one more time. You're back at the bedside with your loved one with sepsis, and you are presented with the opportunity to use AI to make better choices for that individual and ultimately ensure their survival from this life-threatening condition. And I would challenge you all to think today, can we get past our skepticism of AI and choose to use these tools to make better decisions for our loved ones and ensure that they can have their best healthiest, most productive lives. I, for one, am incredibly excited about this new healthcare information age, 
a time in which all of us can ask for, and perhaps even more importantly, demand the use of these tools to ensure that the decisions that we make for our loved ones and potentially for ourselves result in the best possible outcomes. Thank you.